we're going to learn about two more flaming evangelists called the locust and the ant. So if you have your Bibles, Proverbs chapter 30 is where we're at. If you're a guest here today, I want to say thank you for being here today. And uh, we're, we're glad that you joined us. Hope you have felt the presence of God. We love you. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24 through 28, where I was at last week. I got one more sermon. You don't want to miss next week. We're going to tie all this up together, okay? Verse 24, Proverbs chapter 30. If you're there, say amen. If not, it's on the big Bible, all right? It says, there be four things. I'm reading now the King James. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. Let that get in your spirit. These are small things. They don't seem like big things to us, but God says you would you'd be wise to take heed to what I'm getting ready to tell you. Look here in verse 25. The ants are a what? The ants are a what? A people. He didn't say an insect. He didn't say an animal. He said the ants are a people, not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Verse 26. The conies are about a feeble folk. You can tell this is King James. I like it anyhow. Yet make their houses in where? The rock. Verse 27, the locusts, they have no king, yet they go forth, all of them, by bands. By bands, they're together. Verse 28, the spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. Father God, in Jesus' name, hide me behind the cross. Set my coattail on fire. May I speak from the cross to God today. May they not see me, but may they hear the voice of Jesus Christ. I love you, and thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen, amen. Number three point was the locust. The locust equal unification. Now listen to me. This is one of the most important points I can make to you today because this is really where the body of Christ is at today. The locust represents unification. See, the locusts have figured out something that a lot of us need to figure out, to be honest with you. One translation says they travel in groups. Now listen to me. They travel in groups. You never see a locust by itself. You always see locusts together. They fly as locusts. So they're in there together. You never see a locust by itself. They're always together. Now listen to me. Very important. You spell unity, U-N-I-T-I. You and I tie. Y'all getting this? Unity, U-N-I-T-Y. You and I tie. When you say unity, what, what you're saying and what you're telling people is that I'm not ordinary because I'm tied to something special. I am tied to the presence of Jesus Christ. That's why when you talk about somebody or you say something that you should not say about them, you, me and God, you and I tie, God. We're together. I am tied. I am linked. I am chained to the presence of Jesus Christ. Psalms 133, verse 1 through 3. I'm going to read this really quick, but write it down. Psalms 133, verses 1 through 3 says, Behold, this is how powerful this is. How good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in Unity, you and I tie. When we're tied together, we'll make a bigger difference. When you and I are getting along, we got things in common, we're on the same page, you and I, when we're tied, you and I tie. When we're tied together, it's better. It says this word, listen to me. It's like, Psalm 133, verse 2, it is like a precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard of Aaron. And it says that when you are tied with somebody, you and I tie, when you're with somebody, it's like a God taking oil and just pouring it over your head and going down your face and going down your body and getting on other people. He says, because when I'm in it and I'm for you, you are unstoppable. Listen to me, Elkhorn. Listen to me, guest. When you, whoever you're tied to will make the difference. Whoever you're tied to, watch this. This is so good. I am tied to God. You and I, God, you and I are tied. You and I tie. I am tied to him. And even when I go the wrong direction, even when I do wrong in my life, listen to me, the rope gets tighter when I try to run. Listen to me. And you say, well, Brian, I don't believe like it. I'm just telling you, make a knot and try to pull against it. It gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. So God says these words, he's spoken into my spirit. Even though I am a mess and I do wrong, and I look at things I should not look at. And I'm not justifying that because sin is sin, and sin will kill you. But what I'm telling you, I got a God that we are tied together, that when I mess up and I do wrong, he don't let go of the rope. He gets tighter and tighter and tighter. That's my God. We got a God that will not let go. So God spoke into my heart. He said, you tell the people 
it's important that they realize that you and I tie. You and I T Y. You and I tie. You can break it down every how you want to. It's good. So it's important that listen to me, Elkhorn. Yes, it's important that we don't let a de- divisive spirit get in your heart. It is important that you protect the spirit of God that is in you. It is important that if you hear gossip or if you hear people doing things that they should not do, it is okay to call that out. It is okay that iron sharpens iron. It is okay to hold people accountable. It really is. So what I'm trying to tell you, it's important that we don't allow the enemy to divide those who are supposed to, who you're supposed to be connected to. It's important that you don't do that. Stay connected to the church. I've said this, and you know what? Y'all are doing great, man. We're growing by leaps and bounds. Averaging close to 600 on Sunday mornings now. It's great. Y'all are doing a great, great job. Souls are being saved. When y'all left last Sunday, what you don't realize, when y'all were leaving, people were still getting saved right up here where Tommy and Missy are at today. Two people got saved last Sunday a setting like this, but can I tell you that when, there's more things that happen outside the church probably doesn't inside the church. So today, what I really feel that God has set me aside to tell you Satan's plan is simple. He is to divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. If you give Satan an inch, he'll take a mile. If you give him a little bit of your mind, it'll seep down to your heart. Wherever you're at right now, listen to me, very important you get this, do not listen to the voice of Satan. Do not listen to the voice of Satan. Because listen to me, Satan's job is to divide and conquer and watch you go to hell. That's his plan. He has nothing good for you. Nothing at all. So his plan is to divide and conquer. What would happen, I wrote this down, if the body of Christ would just get together? I love being a Baptist, but watch this. What if the old Baptist would get with the Methodist? And what if the Methodist would get with the Pentecostal? And what if the Pentecostal would get with the conservative or whomever? If we just get together and quit snarling our noses about who's right, who's wrong, who's this, who's that, and let's just praise the Lord. Amen? Let's don't worry about all this other stuff. Because that's what's wrong with the body of Christ. Most people are worried about a sinking denomination. Listen, I love being a Baptist, but I'm a Christian first. Baptists will never come before Christian. Never, 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 never. If you're more concerned about your denomination than those going to hell, your priorities is wrong. It's wrong. I'm not worried about being a Baptist. I'm not worried about being a Pentecostal. Watch this. There's going to be Pentecostal in heaven, and even if a Catholic asks God to come in their heart and save their soul and forgive them of their sins, they'll be in heaven. What we got to do is worship the denominator. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And I got people, man, that will get slick and go off on me. Because they say, well, I'm a Baptist. I don't care. Watch this. God don't care. When you get to heaven, I promise you, Glenn, the way I read my Bible, I've never seen one of the questions, are you a Baptist? Are you a Pentecostal? Because that makes a difference what section you get in. I have never read that. And people will get mad and fire preachers because they said, you know what, it ain't about the denomination, it's about the denominator. And boy, after that, watch this. I I promise, I'm not being mean this morning, but I don't care. I don't care if you're a Baptist. I don't care if you're a Methodist. I don't care if you're a separate Baptist. Just love Jesus. Just love God. He'll straighten all this other stinking stuff out. Love the Lord. Somebody give him a praise. That's good preaching whether you like it or not. Just love the Lord. Drop the denomination. You say, Brian, are we going to change our sign up front? No. Because I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about that. I'm worried about the person sitting beside you and in front of you and behind you. If they were to die, are they going to heaven or are they going to hell? That's the church. Listen to me. If y'all want to grow God's church, be unified. You and I tie. Whether you like it or not, we are tied together the church is together and when christ died i promise you he did not stand up in the upper room and said you're a baptist you're a methodist you're a pentecostal you're charismatic you're i don't know he didn't do that all i'm saying is that i'm not against baptists i love baptists but i love god more without god we wouldn't be here baptists will fail you methodists will fail you denomination will fail you but the denominator 
will never fail you. He'll never drop you. He's on time every single time. And that's where we're at. That's where we're at. People are so sick and tired of hearing a sermon, they want to see a sermon lived out. They want to see a sermon lived out in their life. I do too. How about you? I want to see that. That's what I'm looking for, some locust Christians. Hallelujah. Some Christians that are together. Hallelujah. A farmer isn't afraid of one locust. A farmer's afraid of a bunch of locusts. Because a farmer knows if, a, if one locust comes in, he can get rid of one. But if a bunch of locusts come in on his harvest, he's going to have a problem. Now, relate this. Hang with me. Y'all got me? See, I got you, preacher. Say the farmer represents Satan. And say you and I represent the locusts. <laughs> Satan knows if Elkhorn Baptist Church and Christians get together like a bunch of locusts, and start swarming over the harvest and taking over the harvest, that's going to mess up his plan. So I declare a bunch of locust Christians that we get together, tied together, you and I tie. Turn your neighbor and say, you and I tie. You and I tie. If you run, the rope's going to get tighter. You can't outrun God. You can't outsmart God. He's God. He's on time every time. Hallelujah. It gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. Why do you think people come to the altar? They think, that, they think they're getting away or they're saying, God just tightens the rope a little bit more. Come on. Come on. Some of y'all are like, uh, jerk a knot in your head. Acts chapter 2, what they had in common, there's churches that, that want to mark out the book of Acts. But let me give you a Greek study really quick. The book of Acts is the only book in the New Testament that doesn't, does not end with a man. I'm telling you, the book of Acts continues on and on. You know why? Because we are the church. The church is not dead. It's alive because we serve a live God. Does that make sense? You can't mark out the book of Acts. But the reason why Acts chapter 2 worked is because they were in one place at a time. They were unified. They were together. And the next thing happened, the Spirit of God fell in that house. Look at this. Acts chapter 16, a few books over, a few chapters over. You got Paul and Silas. They were in prison together, chained together. But all of a sudden, Paul looks up and he said, let's sing a song. Now, I know a lot of us, we'd be in jail. We're sitting there going, I ain't singing no song. Uh, I'm not going to sing no song. I don't deserve to be here. I won't be here. But the way Paul looked at it, it was an opportunity. Y'all getting me? It was an opportunity instead of a crisis. So what he done, he looked at Silas, he said, hey, let's sing a song together. And all of a sudden they started singing, and the Spirit of God fell in that place. And the next thing you know, the door came open, and the church got set free. And what I'm trying to tell Elkhorn and a guest here today, you start praising God, you're chained to him, you and I are tied together. You start praising him, the prison door will come open, and you will be set free in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You'll be set free in this house. Just start praising. You say, Brian, I'm not rambunctious. I'm not loud. Maybe you need to go to prison. Because you get in there, boy, you start thinking. That's the scariest thing about prison. You know why? They give them downtime. They make them sit in a little jail cell, and all of a sudden your mind starts messing with you. What are you doing? You deserve it. The next thing you know, it's, how, it's what you think in your mind, in your head, if you'll be set free or not. Same way with the church. There's so many people that act free in church, but really they're in prison. They're really, they're, they're in prison. They're, 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 they're away. Listen to me. Oh, how I wish the, the church would just get together. Just get together. Listen, church is the easiest thing in the world, but you've got to die. Church is the easiest thing in the world, but your opinions have to die. What you think has got to die. Flesh has got to die for, for spirits to rise. Just got to die. Listen to me. You cannot worship God in flesh. That's what the Bible says. You can't worship him in flesh. You've got to worship him in spirit and in truth. So that means if we have church, we got to be unified, unitai. we got to be together, and we got to swarm the harvest. But God will give it to us. That's what I love about Elkhorn. I know we've got our problems. Yes, we've got problems. you got people. You're going to have problems. And if you've got Brian Rafferty as your pastor, you're going to have problems. Because amen. That's the way it is. I'm good with that. You know why? Because I know me. But I, I'm truthful with that. I'm truthful with that because I know I'm high-wired. I'm, I'm strung high. I sweat. I, hop, I hoop. I holler. I do it all. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe from Genesis to Revelation. We say we do until something happens at the church. And all of a sudden, we're like, well, hold on there, preacher. 
I don't, I've never read that. You're, probably, you're right. But here's the thing. Listen to me. I am blessed to be your pastor. I am blessed to break the Word of God. I am blessed to be here this morning and take the Word of God and tell you what God told me this week. But the reason why we are going forward is because we are unity. We are together. We're going forward. We're swarming over the harvest. We don't care the red, yellow, black, and white. I don't care if they're ex-drug addict. I don't care who they are. Get to Jesus. Get to Jesus. We love everybody. We say we do. That's why, thank God, we don't have a, we don't have a white church. Thank God we just don't have a black church. Thank God. Listen, we're Baskin Robbins Church. I told you guys this a long time ago, man. We got Vanilla Baptist. We got, we got Rocky Road Pentecostal. We got it all. But you know what? That is church. That is church. You got flavors of all kind. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm a, I wrote this down. I'm going to go to my second point. Churches that are mad at one another, listen to me. Churches that that this side won't talk to that side or front, won't talk to the back, and they're, they're disunified, God will not bless that church. Y'all can get mad at me all you want to. Show me in the Bible. God will not bless. God says if you want to be unified, if you want a blessing, you want that oil to be poured over your head, run down your beard, down your garment to the congregation. He said, be unified in my name. You're better together than you are apart. We'll make a bigger difference here in Campbellsville when we get together. And greater things will happen because we love the Lord. I'm telling you the truth this morning. Greater things will happen. But if you've got a church that's going boom, 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 boom mad, and don't like the preacher, don't like the deacons, this, that, and the other, I'm telling you. God will not bless that church. Y'all look at him. Don't be throwing popcorn. God will not bless it. A husband and wife who are, who are disunified and not on the same page, God will not bless that home. He will not bless that home. But you get a husband and a wife and a man of God and Holy Spirit-filled deacons of God and a church that's madly, deeply crazy in love with God going in the same direction, swarming over the harvest. There'll be a difference. Ah, Satan will tuck that tail and go back to hell where he came from. You get people together, it's powerful. The Bible says one can put a 1,000 to flight, but two can put 10,000 to flight. I just wonder how many 500 people today can put to flight. I'll take it. Boy, you talk about an army. My God, it gets my blood just going. You talk about an army of Zion. You talk about the tribe of Judah rising up with the Christian flag in their hand and saying, I don't care who it is, where we got to go, but we're going to do it, and we're going to do it right. We're going to stand on the word of God. We're not going to back off the authority of God. This is the way it is. March on, soldier, because unity makes a difference in your life. Amen? Somebody praise God. We got to stick together. We got to, everybody say, stick together. Run together. Holler together. Whatever, fall together. Whatever we got to do, we're going to do it together. We, we swim, we swim together. We fall, we fall together. But Elkhorn Baptist Church, we are unified. Yeah, we're unified. We're together. And that's why that's going to happen. That's why everything, I'm saying it's good. Good. And people look at me like, dude, oh, thank God for Prozac. I'm telling you, when you get into fellowship with God and you've been touched by his hand and the oil, hallelujah, has been poured over your head, running down your top of the Lord, running down your cheeks, run down your garments, I'm telling you, somebody going to get oil on them. Somebody going to get some oil on you today. That oil represents the Holy Spirit. And I doubled, I stick the Holy Ghost on you today. I rest you in the name of Jesus Christ. I know you say, well, Brian, I'm looking for a plain old church service. It's not here, baby. That's down the road a little bit, but it's not here. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to stay on fire. It's going to get more intense. We're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. I declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. We're, all, we're unified. We're together. We're going forward. We're marching to Zion. We're going forward, church. We're not going to stop. We're not going to stop the hell's plundered and heaven's populated. Stand to your feet. Come on, give, you can do better than that. Come on, stand to your feet. We're going to give God 10 seconds of praise. Come on. 10. Come on. 9. 8. 7.
seven, six, five, come on, three, two, one, come on. Woo! Thank you, Lord. You say, Brian, why do you do that? Well, that got your blood going anyway, didn't it? How many of y'all feel better now by just getting up and clapping and saying, praise God? Because some of you is going, and that wasn't a concert headbang either. There's just something, of, listen to me, there's just something about it when God's people stand to their feet, put their hands together and say, J-E-S-U-S. Because I'm telling you, he'll drop his spirit in this room and things will happen. When you're unified, but it, watch this, but if you're sitting there going, eh, all they do is sing and clap. All they do is hoop and holler. I'm telling you, you're not, I'm telling you, listen, watch me, I'm trying to help you out. I'm really trying to help you this morning. There is power when people get up and stand up. Prayer get put back in school when Christians stand up. Signs, wonders, and healings will happen when Christians stand up. Churches will come together when people stand up for the Lord. Amen? Woo! I feel it. I ain't even on my last point yet either. Spitting. It's holy though, Bobby. The last one's the ant. That means preparation. The spider means determination. The old cone even means... Um, Habitation. Now, what was the last one? Help me. The locust means what? Unification. And the ant means preparation. Y'all got all the shuns, whatever? All right. The Bible says that the ant prepares his meat in the summer because he knows winter is coming. Listen to me. The, Bi the Bible says the ant prepares his meat, his meat, people, in the summer because he knows winter is coming. See, the message of the ant is this. Y'all ready? Is to prepare for winter. Prepare for winter. Life has been summed up in four seasons. And I want y'all to write this down if you're taking notes. And I'll preach here in just a moment. But listen to me. Four ways life has been summed up. Spring. You, that's your young years. That's your teenage years. Your adolescence, your childhood. Boy, you would swing over hell on a wet noodle. That's them seasons, boy, you can just do anything. Boy, you're crazy. You know, you're invincible. And then there's another season, the summer. This is for manhood and womanhood, maturity, growing up, getting on your own, going your own direction. Number third, third one's fall. It's getting older. And this is where I feel. I feel like I'm in the third quarter right now. You're getting older. You got grandchildren, retirement. You're living for others. You know, you look you look at your grandchildren, boy, you, you do things for them that you didn't normally do for your for yourself. You're in a different season of your life. Coach calls this third quarter. The last one I want to talk to you about is winter. I want y'all to listen to me. Say, I got you, preacher. Very important you give God your ears right now, okay? Give God your ears. Winter in the Bible always speaks of death. Listen to me. Scripture says you'd be wise, you'd be wise to look at the ant and follow the ant and prepare in summer for the winter. Prepare for death. Prepare for eternity. Prepare for where, your heart, where you're going to spend forevermore. The ant prepares for death. In other words, the ant don't wait too late. The ant don't wait till winter, get on its deathbed, and all of a sudden say, boy, I want to be saved. The ant don't wait till they get a bad diagnosis from a doctor and then all of a sudden say, you know what? I want to make things different. Because I want you all to hear this preacher and hear me well. According to the Bible, John chapter 6, if the Holy Spirit is not dealing with you, you cannot be saved. Oh, listen to me. That's why we, America, the 21st century, we got a lot of false conversions. We got a lot of people that have walked the aisle, but they based it upon they got busted on a Friday night and they spent jail on a Saturday. Then they come to church on a Sunday, and then they say, well, I know I need to get my life right, but the Holy Spirit's not dealing with them, and they walk the aisle, and nothing ever changes in their life. 
That's not salvation. Salvation equals transformation. You'll transform. You'll go from a, from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Hallelujah. You'll go from a Saul to a Paul. You'll go from a Brian Keith Rafferty to a son of the Most High. You'll, you'll get a name change. You'll get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. There'll be a difference in your life. You won't talk and act and go to places that you used to go. Because why? There's something different in your life. I can't even talk the way I used to talk. Even when my flesh wants to, my spirit will rise up and say, Brian Keith Rafferty, you know better. You better yield. Don't you go that way. Do not enter. Warning, warning, warning. And now he's like, warning, warning. That scream has went to a whisper. Your heart has become hard. But I've got good news for you today. If you're here and you're breathing, you can still get Jesus. All you got to do is turn. You're going the wrong way, sir. Mom, dad, youth, a lot of you going the wrong way. Warning, warning, warning. Don't go that way. It's a dead end. Don't you park there. No parking any time. Don't you do that. And you hear God. You hear God. You know God. You're saved. But I'm telling you, you're not prepared. Stop. Stop. Don't go that way. I've been your pastor now for a little over five years. It's hard to believe. Walking on our sixth year here at Elkhorn. I've buried a lot of people. A lot. Two weeks ago, I buried a 40-year-old. Now, listen to me. Five years ago, I stood over five teenagers. Last year, I buried two little babies. If I get the states on that one. It was both this, this long caskets there's twins side by side in this one casket i went in, in, in funeral homes and i've heard mamas scream with the intensity that they said they didn't know god i'll never see him again and i want you to listen to my voice this morning because i'm putting a beckoning call out Please, in the name of Jesus Christ, don't walk out that door the same way you walked in this house. God is calling you. You've had your warnings after warnings after warnings. He screamed. Now it's a whisper. And here you are still at church, knowing where you're at, knowing what's going on, knowing if your heart were to stop, you don't know where you would spend eternity. we got people that when we give the altar call, they'll walk out the door. Shame on you. The most important time. Now, if you got to work, but if you're just getting up and leaving because you don't want to be changed, I worry about you, sir. I worry about you, ma'am. The most important time of this service is when the praise went forward, the worships went forward, the words went forward, and the Bible says it don't come back void, and people leave. So what you're telling me and telling God that you're okay, you got everything worked out, figured out, you've prepared your way to heaven. If you were to die, everything's good. You have no sin in your life. You don't need to be changed. You don't need to be transformed. Don't y'all tune me out when preacher's preaching. It's the truth. It's the truth. I'm telling y'all, listen to me. He's a holy God. I fear the Lord. He's not a joke. He's not a Walmart special. He's not a blue special. I'm telling you, he's God. He's holy. He's worthy. He's worth every bit of it. And if we can't say a little bit after 12, your priorities is wrong. That's right. Only people get mad about this is the ones that's leaving. So they're leaving anyway, so. I'm telling you today, come before winter. I'm telling you today, come before winter. You say, Brian, I'm good right now. I, the sun's shining. I'm not sick. I got a good doctor's report last month. Everything's good with me. This and, the Bible says that the ant is worth looking at. The ant prepares in the summer for winter. Let me ask you something. Are y'all rapture ready? If the rapture were to take place right now, Dana, right now with my wife, Dana Michelle Rafferty, will you be in heaven? 
praise God, my wife's born again. I've had people, I've had people get mad. You ask them, do they know Jesus? They say, I got offended by that. You get offended by people asking you, do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? When you sit there and they say, Brian, do you know Jesus? Let me just go ahead and tell you about my friend. He changed me. He saved me. I'm blood-bought. I'm under the blood of God. Do you got two hours? I can tell you more. Hallelujah. I'm happy when people ask me about Jesus. I want to tell somebody about my best friend. Hallelujah. I preach myself happy this morning. Come before winter. Praise team, you guys come before winter. <laughs> y'all are awesome. Thank y'all for all you do. Come before winter. Say, Brian, everything's good. Let me tell you something. Me and Coach was talking a while ago about Paul Dameron. Man going down Highway 55. Now think about this. And a rock flew out from one of those mowing machines and hit him right here. Right here. Not here, 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 here. Talked to his wife and she said, Brian, the way you're going to look at that, it's his time to go. And can I tell you guys, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. This old preacher one day, y'all going to stand up, you're going to look over in this casket, and it's going to be your pastor laying in that casket. But can I tell you something? Now, I'm not saying this because if you're here and I'm a preacher, because I believe that many of preachers will be in hell. I believe there will be a many of people who thought they were saved won't be there. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit's got to draw you, Johnny. He's got to draw you into that salvation. If your heart's sitting there going like this right now, that's probably the Holy Spirit on you right now. But I'm telling you, listen to me. One day, I'm going to die. One day, you're going to die. It's a fact. It's a fact. I had a woman, she was 98 years old. <laughs> 98 years old. Went to the hospital to visit her. She looked at me and said, Preacher, don't you pray that I live. I'm like, that blew my mind. Because I was going to say, Lord, Jesus, bless her 10 more years and let her be fruitful and let her multiply. Not multiply, but anyway, let her be fruitful. And just <laughs> We have another Abraham and Sarah. We don't want that. <laughs> but man, she said, she looked at the mic. She said, Brian, don't you pray that I live. She said, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to meet the Lord. I've worked hard in my life. And now I've got Jesus, and I'm not going to let go. The rope's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. My God, i got a mansion right now being built for me. It's not yours either. It's mine. Don't y'all be coming over and saying it's yours. It's my mansion. Streets of gold. You say, Brian, you believe that? If I didn't, I quit this morning. I resign because all of us will go to hell if it's a lie. I believe it. And I'm asking you, are you rapture ready? That, right now, if the horn were to sound and it takes place, would there be clothes laying in your chair? Will you be looking around going, where'd everybody go? Husbands, let me ask you something. Are you saved? Are you born again? Are you leaving your household? I'm telling you. Oh, I'm telling you, these last days, according to the Bible, Joel chapter 2 and Acts chapter 2, he said there's going to be an outpouring. There's going to be a move of God like never before, and I'm going to be a part of that generation. Oh, come Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you today, are you rapture ready? Do you know that 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 you double dog know that you're going to heaven? You say, Brian, well, I've said that prayer, but there's never been no change. Watch this. Let me help you all out really quick. You ready? If no change, no God. I am so tired of people watering that stuff down. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and there's never been a change, a transformation in your life, and you can go and do what you want to do and act the way you want to act, talk the way you want to talk, that's not God. It's not a real, that's a false conversion. Be careful. I'm preaching truth now. But if there's been a change in your life, you've changed dancing partners, hallelujah. You're... You, you talk the way you, that you didn't used to, amen? You talk better. And you feel something in you right now. That's a good sign. That's a good sign.
Are you rapture ready? Church, y'all look at me. Are you rapture ready? Nick, if the horn were to sound, where are you going? How you know? Huh? He's asking. You say, Brian, you call people out. Yep, y'all fall asleep too easy. Listen to me. Are you rapture ready? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? I didn't ask. Watch me. I didn't say get saved again. Because I believe when you get saved, he ties a knot. And even though you may go the wrong way, it gets tighter if you're truly born again. How many of y'all messed up? If your hand's not up, you messed up. Everybody's messed up in this house. We need a closer walk with God. So today, listen to me. Don't wait too long. I've stood over people, over caskets, and mama's screaming their heads off. Brian, he didn't know God. Can't do nothing. It's over. Seth, James said that life is like a vapor. You're here today and you're gone tomorrow. How many of you know it's true? I look in the mirror now and things that used to stand don't stand. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, come before winter. Come before winter. That little girl up there, the first thing I pray, Lord, save her, save her, save her, save her. So if you would, guys, y'all ready? Come before winter. Don't wait too long. You say, Brian, I don't know. You need to run to the altar and find Jesus today. You say, Brian, I don't remember. There's never been a change in my life. I'm talking to you this morning. I'm talking to you this morning. Come before winter. Come before it's too late. Teenagers, come. Adults, come. Mom, dads, come. Come before it's too late. Father God, do your thing. Do your thing, Lord. Save a soul in here today, God. Unification and preparation. Do you know that you're going to heaven? Not based upon what you did last night, but now. Father God, do your thing in Jesus' name.